G'day everyone, Como Johnny here again Friday, uh, just before the weekend, Friday afternoon and uh, I wasn't going to be uh, uh, posting again today but uh, uh, there's something uh, that I, I think I need to talk through with you and uh, and uh, you know bring you into the picture a little bit more, okay? Uh, okay, look, I've copped uh, a fair bit of uh, feedback, right, uh, from a lot of people who wish to, who have indicated to me that they would easily um, second the motion that uh, that I've uh, that I've uh, published. Okay, so I I have no issues now that uh, there is going to be, um, you know, there's going to be no issue in terms of finding a seconder for the motion. Uh, f to take a national strike but uh, I'm really having trouble I'm really having trouble sort of uh, trying to work out um, who would be appropriate to take that strike action and it's not for political reasons it's not for the reasons that you think everyone okay I, 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 after this, after this uh, um, discussion that I'm having with you now, I want you to watch a um, uh, a clip. Uh, it goes for nearly 20 minutes. Okay, it goes for nearly 20 minutes. It's by a guy called Brendan O'Connell. Brendan's been around a long time, mate. A long time. Okay, and. Uh, and he's no mug. I mean, Brendan is no mug. Now, I've known Brendan for quite a number of years now. In fact, he's interviewed me a couple of times. And uh, I then had a falling out with Brendan. And the reason why I had a falling out with Brendan is that um, he, uh, uh, he backstabbed me, right? He backstabbed, he betrayed me. Okay, now I've since forgiven him about all this, right? I've since forgiven him, and uh, you know, and, and uh, I, I've not let it worry me, and I've moved on. I've just moved on. I mean, you know, this war is not about me. It's not about me. Now, Brendan, Brendan is a very, very good researcher, and he puts together very, very good um, uploads. Uh, with that research that he does. Now his weakness, his weakness is, right, that because he's been jailed and, and uh, um, a victim of uh, you know, state-sanctioned uh, stalking and violence and all this sort of stuff, right, because of that, um, it's damaged him a bit. So his, his uh, analysis, his analysis on uh, on you know, key issues, mate, is tainted. It's tainted, right? Um, because his thinking is just so fucked up on some things, right? But many other things, there are many other things where he is right on the money. I mean, right on the money. So I'm not here to promote Brendan or to say he's the ant's pants to, you know, everything. I'm not here to say any of that, but there are times where this guy mate is right on the money and this clip this clip that I, uh, that I want you to watch after that's following this uh, upload here this one he is he's right on the money and you need to know you need to know what he's saying and, and just uh, you know just uh, the implications of it Look, everyone out there, you, you've got to really understand just how much, how dangerous these Freemasons are. You've got to understand it, folks. Freemasonry, Zionism, and Jewish power has got our country by the throat. It's got it by the throat. And, uh, and they do that, they do that. Uh, two of their principal weapons is uh, blackmail and all sorts of things are done in that blackmail but we know that uh, children and unspeakable crimes is part of it 
blackmail. But the other is murder. The other is murder. These police forces around Australia, they are murderers, mate. Murderers. You've got to understand that. They, they murder people. Up here in Queensland, we've had more more people shot and killed in this state than the rest of the police forces in Australia. And and uh, of the ones that I know about, I mean, hey, this is really, really sus. I mean, it's sus. These people are murderers, mate. Now, over in Western Australia, where Brendan was uh, situated, have a look at what uh, Brendan's reporting on. A young mother over there with two young children was butchered, was butchered, murdered. And then her two young children were hacked to death, hacked to death by the cops or their operatives. You understand me, guys? Then they send their clean-up crews Nothing to see here, nothing to see here. Then they send their corporate media, and we know, we know, they're all in on it. They can murder at will. Nothing will be done, nothing. And they know this. And this is Freemasonic, Zionist, and Jewish power. We are Goyim. Goyim, cattle. And they will murder us at will. Ladies and gentlemen out there, the stakes here in Australia have never been higher. Have never been higher ever. Many of these people are never going to walk the streets again. Never. They know this. They know it. And anyone, anyone who has a capability of challenging that power and exposing that power may well tip them to make a decision to murder them and I'm in no doubt of that there's a lot of things ladies and gentlemen that as an old communist that uh, I know what goes on inside these secret societies Oh, don't worry, mate. Us old communists, mate. So, I want you to understand that whoever seconds this motion may potentially end up being on that target list. Now, I accept, I accept that I am now a target. My life is no longer my own as of the interview that I did with Bosi and my call for a national strike. This is going to work, folks. I am telling you now, it's going to work. And the Freemasons, the Jews and the Zionists know it. They know it. So I, uh, I'm going to be on that target list. I know that. So I've got to be very careful, very careful. Remember a lot of years ago, remember Pauline Hansen, when there was this clip when she wrapped this Australian flag around herself and saying, if you're hearing this and I'm dead, you know that I've died, you know, fighting for my country. Remember that? Remember that? That was real, mate. That was all real. If Pauline Hansen had had the capability to really expose these people and tip them out, she would have been murdered. They would have murdered her. I mean, she got away by the skin of the teeth because they jailed her. And I don't know what's going on in Pauline's head. It's not my business. But that may be one of the reasons why she's too gutless to stand up to him now. That may well be so. And if it is, Pauline, if you are under threat, if your life is in danger by 
Zionist, Jewish and Freemasonic power, then you're going to have to come clean, sister, and tell us. Because right now you are sitting right in amongst them, reinforcing that power, giving credibility to that power. And we can't tolerate it anymore. To everyone out there, do not trust the police, any of them, any of them, not one of them. I don't care if you think, oh, they're, you know, that he's a nice bloke or there's a, none of them. Don't trust them. Until we clean all of these criminal syndicate out, mate, don't trust them. Whatsoever, do not trust them. If they're capable of murdering a, a single mother in cold blood and then hacking her children to death, they're fucking monsters. They're monsters. Watch this clip coming up from Brendan O'Donnell. And it is true. Note that it was Wayne Glue who was providing advice, constitutional advice. I mean, ask Wayne Glue if it's true. He's an ex-police officer over there. To wonder he himself hasn't been murdered. I've got to be careful who seconds this motion, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to be very careful because I know that my head's on the chopping block. I know. If you don't like me, for those people who are out there, if you want to really do me over, now's the time, folks. Because my only protection, my only protection is you. The more people who have their eyes on me, the more glare that there is for these murdering bastards to come in and hurt me, helps me. It's my only protection. It's my only protection. I don't want to be melodramatic about this. But if you think, if you think that Freemasonic, Jewish and Zionist, this Zionist power structure with everything on the line, they're going to lose everything. The stakes have never been higher. If you think that they won't kill, maim or murder, to keep it and to protect it, then you're not living in the real world. Have a look at what they've just done with the mass murder of thousands of Australians with this fucking toxic jab. I had to, I had to get this rant out, ladies and gentlemen. I don't want to be seen as being melodramatic but you have to know the enemy. You guys have to know the enemy. When Bosey talks about Freemasonic filth, man, he is right on the money. Right on the money. It's a wonder Bosey hasn't been knocked now. It's a wonder. I asked myself that question. How come they haven't got to him and knocked him? And I can, I can only come up with the answer that God's got his back. That God's got his back. I hope God's got my back in this war. We've got some tough, tough days ahead. We've got some tough days ahead, people. Be strong and be fearless. We've got it. They cannot win this war. They cannot win it. But we've got to take the fucking garbage out. We've got to take the garbage out. That's our job. Thanks, everyone. If I feel the need to, I'll, uh, I'll tag on to the end of Brendan O'Connell's clip. Uh, with a little bit to finish. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's Brendan O'Connell. It's the Bell Day, boy, live from this fucking backwards, redneck, piece of shit, Masonic, Jewish-controlled state called Perth, Western Australia. How controlled is it by Jewish power and Freemasonry? Cast your eyes over there.
What's that? What is that? That's a very good question. This is the Perth District Court, if you look up there. Now we ask the question, where is the, ideally the state, or actually the Royal Seal, which is the lion and the unicorn, that's lawful authority, because, you know, believe it or not, we are still a supposedly constitutional, monarchical, parliamentary democracy, supposedly, according to the Australian Constitution. But of course, when Bob Hawke and Paul Keating, the Rhodes Scholars and Fabian Socialists came along and in 1986 brought forward the Australia Act, which Her Majesty never acquiesced to or agreed to, they basically wrote out the Constitution. I mean, you can't do it, but they did it. Uh, thanks, Bob and co. And that's the result. That's what you get when you do that. A great big pyramid. This is a privately owned building. This is not a government building. It's privately owned. It's rented to the West Australian Government. And I'll ask you the question again. Why is there not either the Royal Seal, and we'll have a picture, there's the Royal Seal, that's, that's what should be there. That would grant lawful authority to the court to operate, to deprive you of your liberty, to fine you, to incarcerate you, those sorts of things. Or at least would even accept, you know, the state coat of arms, which is, of course, the emu and the kangaroo, but perhaps they're a bit too embarrassed to admit they're basically a kangaroo court. Uh, you'll have to ask them that question. But that, that's a very valid question. It's right in front of you. It's hidden in plain view. So, what is that pyramid? Now, what's on top of the Israeli Supreme Court building? Well, I'll tell you what's on top of the Israeli Supreme Court building. It's a ruddy great huge pyramid. Isn't that funny? And what's on top of the, uh, or should I say, what's on the front of the US $1 bill? Novus Ordo Seclorum, which is New Order of the Ages or New World Order on the US $1 bill. It's staring you in the face. There is a pyramid on that side of the building because just over that way is the local Masonic Lodge. Who heads the Masonic Lodge in Perth? It's Inspector Steve Jancic, J-A-N-C-E-C. -E Inspector of Police. And if you want to go above the rank of Sergeant in the WA Police Service, you will have to join a lodge. If you want to get high in the Water Corporation or in any government department, they will demand you join a lodge. They run Perth, Judaized masonry. How Judaized is it? How Jewish controlled is it? Well, the local Freemason rag and the local Jewish Maccabean paper is distributed by the same mass mail-out company, Laser Mail, just over there in East Perth. I think that should uh, tell you volumes. I got a job there in March of 2010. Five hours later, the owner was knocked off his bike and nearly killed. And there's about five other deaths we could talk about surrounding my case. Eddie, the Syrian Christian who was uh, murdered in his office, burned to death in 2010, just here in Perth. Uh, my best friend, he was best man at his wedding, uh, an American supporter. His brother was murdered. He was incinerated in an office fire in uh, the United States. I could go on and on and on. Then there's the case of my sister, Jackie, Jackie O'Connell, um, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, getting back to that pyramid, have a look at this. Pyramids all over Masonic lodges, as you can see. We've got the, uh, in Covent Gardens, we have the British, uh, Scottish Rite Freemason Lodge there. Have a look. We've got um, Kadosh El Adonai, which is holy for Yehovah in Hebrew. We have the Ark of the Covenant. Have a look. Have a look at Lord. Are you working it out yet? Well, I hope you do. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. We've got to get rid of Freemasonry and we've got to get rid of Jewish power. They inhabit the lodges. They control the lodges. They commit murder. Should we talk about murders now? Let's talk about Heather Glendinning, a woman who supposedly stabbed herself nine times, nine times in Port Denison. Port Denison, just south of Geraldton, on the midwest coast of Western Australia. Just one month before my appeal was due when I was held in the maximum security jail at Casarina Prison in the management unit as I was waiting to go before the Chief Justice in the Supreme Court. She suddenly decides to stab herself to death nine times, two of which were fatal. It hasn't been released by the coroners. I was told this by a former serving police officer. And then slaughtered, and I mean slaughtered, her two daughters. She loved her daughters. She was clearly murdered. The police immediately came out and said, there's nothing to see here. It's a clear murder-suicide. Move on. In a shocking development, police have revealed that an outside killer was not responsible for the gruesome deaths of a mother and her two daughters in Port Denison on Monday. On the basis of the evidence that we now have, we do not believe there is another party involved in the uh, deceased uh, females. They are believed to be Heather Glendinning, who's 46 years of age. Um, she's the mother of Jane Cousins, who's 12 years of age. And her sister is uh, Jessica Cousins, who's 10 years of age. A Facebook page has been set up in memory of the family as the community struggles to believe that the mother could be the only one responsible for killing her daughters. The forensic investigation continues, as does the work of the investigators at the scene. As with all homicide investigations, uh, we remain open-minded. 
We're not tunnel vision, and as more evidence uh, comes in, we will look at that. The coroner's report is three years. We're waiting. We're still waiting. They haven't released it. It has been hushed up and covered up. The woman had just won a major, she just won her major legal case, got a big payout, the next day she's dead. She's accused of being mentally ill because she made the same claims I did, that um, the transcripts were altered, that she was being stalked, and they said the same things about Heather Glendinning that they said about me, that I was a nut, I was delusional, I was bipolar. They murder people in this state. Look at Lloyd Rainey, just come out, let's cross now to the case of Lloyd Rainey, a lawyer who the police tried to set up for murder. The police, they planted evidence, they do it all the time. Good evening. The question has divided Perth for exactly seven years. Who killed Corin Rainey? Tonight, for the very first time, you will see an emotional Lloyd Rainey begging police to find his wife's killer. And that was the start of this nightmare that's gone on for seven years and, and still hasn't finished. The former state prosecutor, charged with killing his wife, has kept silent since being found not guilty. Silent until now. All right, they threaten people. Let's go where they threaten his lawyer friend. I think her name is Kathy O'Brien, a former uh, Department of Public Prosecutions lawyer who was friends with Lloyd Rainey. Here's what the WA police did to her. Police wanted to interview lawyer and former state prosecutor Claire O'Brien, who was a friend of Lloyd's, to see if she could help them in relation to a number of lines of inquiry they were pursuing. This included a theory that Lloyd had hired a former client of his, who they described as a hitman. So they decided to interview Claire and take a statement from her. Her account of that interview is really quite chilling. Did the police officers put pressure on you to provide that statement? Yes. And that they had been given clear or firm instructions that if I didn't cooperate that night, that I was to be charged. Charged with what? They didn't say. Did one of them say this to you? You know how it works, Claire. We charge you. You lose your job. Your reputation is destroyed. You can't get a good lawyer because you have no money. And then we drop the charges and you are yesterday's news and no one writes the follow-up story. Those officers misused their position of authority and threatened to abuse their power of arrest, which should only be exercised when the evidence justifies an arrest. As I said earlier, that sort of conduct should not be tolerated. See what I mean? They did the same to me. They threaten people like they say, we'll put you in the paper, you'll be charged, you'll lose your job, you'll have no money, you won't be able to afford a lawyer. That's the sort of shit these scum West Australian pigs pull off every day. They're pieces of dog shit. The WA police are the worst police service in the country. They're the worst. They're racist, redneck pricks. British police who come over here get out as soon as possible. They can't stand it. Their view of the WA police is so low, they actually had a mass sacking of 200 coppers and they kept it quiet. The media failed to report the mass sacking of 200 coppers. The entire major crime squad, who you saw intimidating Lloyd Rainey and co, who, you, who took on my very good friend Ali Amun, who's still in jail, who framed him and did all sorts of shit to him, the entire major crime squad from 2011 on has been completely shoved out. They're all gone. They're that fucking bad. Now what happened to them? Well, one of them, Detective Carl Casilli, is so fucking corrupt, he's a meth, an ice-smoking piece of garbage, he just got done for nine months for passing on confidential information to a little, one of the little crack whores, one of the little lawyer crack whores here, who's now married to John Hammond. What's her name? I can't even remember her name. Put that in now. This little crack whore is accepting confidential documents from this detective, who's also a meth-smoking piece of shit, Detective Carl Casilli. Casilli gets nine months. Well, I heard he didn't serve a day in jail. He already had the appeal. His leave to appeal was granted and he got bail. He didn't serve a day in jail. That's what I heard. Again, media haven't reported it. But what's more about Detective Carl Casilli? Well, Detective Carl Casilli was part of major crime. He was part of the Lloyd Rainey, the Lord Rainey case, right? This dodgy fuck, this dodgy fuck, Detective Carl Casilli. This man goes to a man called Johnny Montani and says to Johnny Montani, if you will say that Lloyd Rainey asked you to kill his wife, and you admit to killing John Woodhouse, a bikey associate, will get you two and a half years jail. This was reported in the mainstream press. That's Detective Carl Casilli, another piece of human garbage in the WA Police Service. Now, supposedly, the Commissioner, Carlo Callahan is cleaning it up. Well, Commissioner, here's what you do. You do it publicly. You are a government department. 
you are paid for by the Western Australian taxpayers. You should have the decency to expose the levels of corruption within your police service to show just how deep it goes. Media representatives from all over Australia were there to record the first day of what would be dubbed the trial of the decade. I was quite shocked to see all, all the detectives walking into court wearing the same specially made ties. One detective was asked in the witness box about this tie and he replied that it was a show of tribalism. So what is this tribalism? Was it indicative that they all thought the same way, that this tribe was out to get its prey and that its prey was Lloyd Rainey. I mean, that's how it looked. Goes, but you're so fucking embarrassed. You're so embarrassed, you have to cover up the fact that you're trying to clean it out. These are the same clowns in the State Security Investigation Group, Counterterrorism, Detective Timothy Richard Payne, Gavin Manners and all the rest of them, who threatened me, who stalked me, who was breaking into the house. Well, it wasn't the Boy, the boy Scouts or the, girl, or the Brownies. It was the WA Police Service doing what they usually do, stalk, harass, threaten, a police half of the course of the WA. On Monday the 16th of November 2009, standing with me is uh, Brendan O'Connell. But... Okay, you were already in the house, you lied! Right. You fucking lied, buddy! Okay. You want to be respected as a copper? Listen to me. No, I'm not listening to you. You, keep that you want to be redundant by right. your the pious public, bullshit on me. Can hear it. Under the impression that the West Australian Police Force had been cleaned up. It appears I was wrong. Detective Timothy Piani sat there with his boss from the State Security Unit and he said, Brendan, when this court case is over, it won't be over. That's what you, Timothy Piani, said to me. The evidence compels the conclusion that Mr. Carraya decided to put on a show of force with officers in vests in a busy city street close to the Supreme Court and to humiliate the accused in public. What were you doing in my house? Listen to me. If you could have planted something in the house. No photographs were ever taken of this third sea pod, despite a police photographer being present when the body bag was searched. The finding of the third sea pod was crucial to the prosecution's case. And the defence strenuously argued to the trial judge that the police had planted this evidence to implicate Lloyd Rainey. Almost everything associated with the police handling of the sea pod evidence was problematic. Now, the one person the defence wanted to cross-examine was the forensic case manager, and he'd had carriage of this case for four years. However, just before he was called to give evidence, he produced a medical certificate excusing him from attending court for the duration of the trial. So we never had the opportunity to hear his side of the story. And I feel sorry for those decent coppers, two of whom shook my hand and apologised, I might add. Uh, <laughs> um, I feel sorry for those people. I don't know how they stay in. I really don't know how they do it. Uh, uh, it's beyond belief. We've got to do something about these fucking clowns. First, get rid of Inspector Steve Jancic and ban Freemasonry. Ban it. Have a look. Have a look. They are bragging. They are literally bragging to you. They own it. They own the courts. Chief Judge Martino, you are a Catholic. What are you doing? The Catholic Church has stated explicitly there is no place for Freemasonry in this society and there is no place for Catholics being involved in Masonic Lodges and there's far too many supposed Catholics involved in Masonic Lodges. Various popes have already issued papal bulls in that regard, instructing that no Catholic maiden belong to Masonic Lodge. I then have uh, Justice Mazur of the Supreme Court, another Catholic, very good to me. They were good. They were decent judges, they were fair, they didn't give me what I wanted, but I could see the disgust in Mazza, Justice Mazza, he was absolutely disgusted with my case, you could see. I don't know what more I can say, look, it's staring you in the face. It's a private building, leased to the government. It's telling you who runs this town. It's telling you, direct to your face, this is run by a Masonic Lodge, there's no royal seal, there's no state coat of arms, it has no lawful authority. It's not because it is a private, corporate takeover. This is true fascism. Hitler was never a fascist, he was a socialist. Centralised command and control. This is true corporatism, true fascism. They are corporatising the entire country. This is part of it, and it's been run through Masonic Lodges, 
run by Jewish power, ultimately Jewish bankers, whose days are very, very numbered. I'm asking you now, this is off the cuff, have a look. I don't know how much more plainly I have to make it. These people are murdering people. Heather Glendinning was murdered, and I would like to ask Inspector Steve Jancic, mate, who murdered her? Who murdered her? Was that a message for me, Inspector Steve Jancic? I used to live in Port Denison. Heather Glendinning was also getting uh, advice off the same man I was, Mr Wayne Glue, constitutional advice. And one month before my appeal, she's murdered. That was a message to me to shut up because on the first day of my sentencing, when I went to the sentencing office of Hakea Maximum Security Remand Centre, I saw a sentencing officer and I burst into tears. I'm not ashamed of that. Not because I was worried about Jar, I was worried about my family. And I said they will go after one of my sisters. She's single, few problems, two young girls. And so Heather Glendinning dies one month before my appeal. She lives in the same town I lived in. She's receiving the same advice off the same person I am. She's slaughtered. She wasn't just chopped up. They were slaughtered, including her two daughters. It was that bad they had to give the, give the police counselling. It was that bad. And then they claim this woman did it alone. No one believes it. No one believes it, but it doesn't matter. Nothing ever changes in this town as long as Freemasons run this town. One final look. Until we address this elephant in the living room, Jewish power and Freemasonry, the lodges that they use as a front to spread out into the business community of any city or town they go into, it's like a cannula, an IV cannula in a patient in a hospital. You could administer all sorts of things directly into the bloodstream, and that's what a lodge is. They're dangerous, they need to be outlawed, they need to be fucking Jancic and his crowd, they need to be booted out of the police service, they need to be run the fuck out of town. These people have to go. They are usurping our constitutional, monarchical, parliamentary democracy. And it ain't perfect, but let me tell you, there are some good things about the monarch. I'm not going to go into it now. There's also some bad things. But let me tell you, English common law, parliamentary democracy, best thing since sliced bread if we choose to, lose, choose to use it. But at the moment, we have secret societies are running the fucking show, and it's time to put them out there. It's not a Hollywood movie. It's not a fucking joke. We can start right here in Perth. I love the fact, what good could come from Perth? What good could come from Nazareth? This backward, redneck, piece of shit place right here in Western Australia. Let's start it somewhere at Mars or be here. Thanks very much. Ciao for now. We'll talk soon. Okay, that was quite a long clip, folks. Uh, that was uh, Brendan O'Connell. Uh, I've known Brendan for a, uh, a few years now, and Brendan's interviewed me a couple of times. And, uh, I mean, what do you think? Can you, are you starting to see it now? Can you, are you starting to see the, uh, the danger and the exposure that our nation is in? Are you starting to see the, um, the crime syndicate, the cartel that they have built? I, I can tell you now, folks, there is nothing, nothing more dangerous in any society than a crooked cop. Nothing. Anyone that is in the business of enforcing law and in the judicial system enforcing law, once they turn rogue, once they turn rogue, there is nothing more dangerous to a society than that. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an infection in our country, a deep infection. We've got one chance at this, one chance with an antidote, and that is a national strike to clean this filth right out. This is not unique to Western Australia, folks. This is all around the country. We have one chance for a peaceful clean-out. And that's a national strike. And if we don't clean this infection out very soon, very, very soon, ladies and gentlemen, our whole country will go gangrene. It will go gangrene. And we will lose the fucking lot. We will lose the lot. I'm not scared of these people. A couple of years ago in the floods, they wanted me dead. They wanted me dead. 
That was the water police. They laughed in my face. They laughed in my face while they were rescuing an unmanned power boat. But here you had a liverboard boat only 80 metres away. They wanted me dead. If you think these people will not kill, will not murder, will not maim, will not blackmail to hold on to their power structures, mate, Freemasonic power structures, Zionist political structures and Jewish power. It's got to be cleaned up, ladies and gentlemen. It's the elephant in the room. Bosi is right on the money when he, when he keeps referring to them as Freemasonic filth because that's what they all are. Filth dangerous filth who have injected just like O'Connell says mate like a cannula into our society they've injected us with a fucking poison and it's our kids thereafter it's our fucking kids no more no more they're fucking out Let's bring this fucking shit show down, mate. Let's stop this bullshitting around. You're not going to hear any of this straight talk, mate, from these other fucking clowns in this freedom movement and truther movement. You're going to hear none of it. None of it. They won't touch this, baby. You watch them. Why? Because they're all in on it. They're all part of it. They're all connected in in one way or another. Not me. I'm over it. I'm over it, mate. I'm 64. And if I got to fucking die, mate, then what a fucking cause to die for. I'm in. National strike. Let's do it. Let's make this country ungovernable thanks comrade john out thank you